Hello everybody, so this is our very first vlog. I just wanted to uh, welcome you to my home. This is basically where I do all my work. As you can see, I am working right now on getting the video for The Lost Haunted Ghost Town Part 2 done. Um, I'm also a painter, so you can see some of my paintings here. Um, I really like to paint helps relax me you know in between writing and and uh, you know getting these videos done and going on adventures so uh, just kind of give you an eyes view of what I do these are the paintings down here that I gotta get done so eventually that will that will get done so I was really excited about getting this video out the lost haunted ghost town because uh, you know when it comes to the paranormal, I'm really into ghosts and spirits the most. Although I will, you know, do like cryptozoology for like the Bigfoot and lake monsters and, and the such, um, I do enjoy, you know, ghosts and spirits the most, you know, which I think everybody does. But the um, reason why I wanted to do this vlog is because I wanted to let you know why I was doing the Lost Haunted Ghost Town video and why I chose um, old mining town to do you know the very first video for ghosts and, and spirits um, because I have an, a, a thing for children who die tragically meaning um, I think they have more of a story to tell so I uh, I wanted to try to find a ghost town which there are many here in Oregon that had the most history and and talk to you guys about that and show you guys you know our adventure on getting there and finding the history of it and everything I'm not gonna tell you the location of the ghost town that we went to although many of you who have been to this ghost town will recognize it so if you want to leave it in the comments where it's at that's up to you guys um, I, I will not um, simply because um, I'm gonna reveal some history about the place and I don't want anybody offended um, or um, making more of it than what it is. So the haunted ghost town that I'm, that me and, and Austin are now going to, Noah and I first started to try to find the place, um, which took a while to find it. Um, but Noah has since moved on. He's a great guy. He. Um, is having some personal issues and he decided to take some time off and so um, you know friends being friends that's what we allow them to do and uh, he had no obligation whatsoever to these videos nor does anybody who comes with me um, however Austin's gonna finish um, up with me with the videos on finding the lost town in ghost town which we did find and uh, we went up there uh, it's up a mountain about 10 miles the most rugged road you could ever think of um, we went up there but by the time we got to the top um, we uh, you know it was snowing and a lot of snow on the ground and it just wasn't a good situation to stay up there and then have to come back down with the road being so rugged so um, I'm or when we go back up there and I'm gonna film it um, I'm actually gonna film us going up the road and you're gonna see what I'm talking about um, I have a four-wheel drive with my forerunner and so thankfully we're able to climb over big boulders with it and the such so uh, look forward to that um, I am super excited to get up there um, I think you're gonna be amazed so the history of the town uh, was is basically um, you know, early 18, mid 1800s um, to the early 1900s, it was a mining town. What amazes me about these mining towns is that they're on very steep mountainsides. These, whoever built these towns didn't just flatten the surface out, they did it on mountainsides, which was super amazing to me because they didn't have automobiles like we have now or four-wheel drives you know they had very limited means 
to get transport up the side of these mountains. And like I said, when you see the video of us going up the side of this mountain, you'll understand what I'm talking about. These people did it in horses and horse and buggies and, and horse and, and wagons with wooden wheels, which amazes me. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed by history and how people worked so hard to do anything, really. I mean, no running water, no electricity, and these people lived, you know. So uh, I think we're, we're really spoiled these days. So uh, I'm, right now I'm just looking at my time on building this video, next video for you. Um, so the history of this town is that you know, a whole bunch of people went up there and started mining, um, which is a big thing in Oregon at the time. Um, I'm not quite sure what they were mining for, but because there was such a small community, um, they had children working in the mines. And so when the children were, during the daytime, they were in school, obviously, or doing their chores at home while the adults went into the mines and worked. At night, they actually sent the children into the mines to work. We're talking as early as nine years old. And of course, you know, when you see the mines on the videos, uh, you'll see how small they are. And so I can understand why they sent children in to some extent, but um, that is definitely something you couldn't get away with nowadays. Um, a lot of these children that went in there uh, worked their butts off and it was hard labor don't get me wrong and these children stuck with it but there was tragedy there was a lot of accidents a lot of injuries and even death uh, a lot of these miners didn't live very long because of breathing in so much dust and uh, back then you know there's asbestos asbestos yeah there we go and the such and uh they were just unaware that that was not good for you. So uh, children didn't last long either. And uh, it's a sad thing, you know. Um, I think at some point in time, the state stepped in and said um, that they had to stop using children and use more safety precautions. And I think that's one of the many reasons why these mines were shut down. Although we still have miners that still go up there to uh, mine gold and ore and whatever it may be that they want to do. So uh, that's kind of the history behind it. And it just, I wanted to do these videos and this adventure because uh, I wanted to show my respects and, uh, you know, just hear their story, get into their world and see what they went through and just to feel their everyday life you know they didn't have movies and internet and and all that stuff they basically just played music and used each other for entertainment I mean literally and so uh, it's just amazing what they went through to try to make money and try to keep food on the table so um, anyways also too I, I uh, the beginning of all this I took my friend Michael and we went up to an army bunker now this is on the coast of Oregon and um, many of you is gonna know where this place is again I'm not gonna mention it uh, what you know exactly what, what the place is called but um, it was really fun to go up there however um, anytime you try to find these locations to go on adventures on and and uh, you know on the internet and stuff um, take it with a grain of salt because we were told that once we got to the location that it was about a mile uphill um, I mean all the way uphill and so we were prepared for that when we got there and talked to the forest ranger to find the exact location and you know what path to take he told us it was four and a half miles up <laughs> So, uh, I didn't take videos of us going up the mountain because it just sounds like 
you know, a big video on promoting asthma because we were breathing really hard. Um, so, but I did take bits and pieces of videos like when we got to the parking lot and, you know, starting it out and, and uh, once we got up there um, and we found the underground bunker, what was really cool about the area is they have what they call a, a camp station or a campers station, I think it's called. But it's it's a uh, four log cabins that is totally free. Um, it's got bunk beds, two bunk beds on each side, and um, you'll see in the video you can just go in there and camp. It's got a overhang, you know, uh, where you can go eat, where is, which is where in the video me and Michael had our lunch, um, and, a, and a center fire pit. And it's super cool that anybody can go up there and just camp for free. Um, this is why I love Oregon. Any other state I've ever been in, you've always had to pay for camping in places like this. And uh, so, I mean, when you look at the video, you're going to be amazed too. But I had super fun going into the underground bunker. Um, you'll get to see us go up close with bats and the such. So I'm going to include that in this video. And then um, I'm going to come back to you and close this out and go from there. I hope you're really enjoying these videos. I'm having super much fun of going on these adventures and, and filming this. I'm getting used to the camera. Um, it took a while to, I know it sounds like chewing gum and walking at the same time, but it's not as easy as most people think it is to film and walk at the same time. So uh, I hope you're having fun. Um, thanks for being patient with me and building this, this YouTube series. And um, thanks for getting my back by subscribing. And by all means, hit those like buttons. And I love comments. You know, I don't care if they're good or bad. Um, a lot of times people give me ideas on how to improve, and I love that. So, you know, by all means, put those comments in there and hit those likes. You know, that really helps me with my sponsors. So, uh, I have to show you the new addition to the household. Um, so, you know, Austin is now living here, and uh, it's a three bedroom, one bath place, so it's big enough for both of us. I have my dog, but uh, Austin has his dog, Riley, um, which is a German Shepherd, and I will show you Riley, which is right there. Come here, Riley. Let me get him in the light. There's Riley. He's doing his toy. He is a super sweet dog. Uh, he's very playful, very young. So, uh, there's <laughs> come up to me um he's new here he's only been here two days so uh he's he's a beautiful dog and austin treats him really well um i will go in and show you my dog so uh you can kind of get an idea of the reason why we had to uh put a gate up between the kitchen and kind of separate the house so that these two dogs can get used to each other because they really just met. Um, this is Tyler, my dog Tyler. This is Tyler, he's on his own bed. He really loves his bed um, and he loves to lay in the sun. So Tyler is half Chihuahua, half Jack Russell. Um, and so uh, him and Riley are trying to get to know each other through this gate for a while and eventually we will remove the gate once they get familiar with each other and okay with each other Riley's quite bigger than than Tyler and so uh, with Riley being so young he wants to be very playful and Tyler's more older and more reserved so um, we have to kind of give them both their respects, you know, getting used to each other, not being so rough with each other. So, with that being said, I will let you go for right now, and I will put, show you the video of the underground bunker, and then I'll get back to you. Thanks, I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, so this is me and Michael who are gonna be going on the trail to the Tillamook Head Bunker. I almost said, let's see that again. So we're starting out, we got all our gear and we're gonna be heading. All right, so we're at the Tillamook, Tillamook, excuse me, Head Bunker. I'm a little tired. Anybody that comes out here, you need to know that the trail is very extreme and it's for experienced hikers only. It's about a mile and a half up, and it's pretty good elevation. But as you can see behind me, we're here finally at the bunker. It's kind of a wet season in Oregon, so a lot of mud. But we found the way to get in. So this is the force behind us. Here's Michael again. Hi, Michael. Hi, everybody. Um, here is how we get in here. Um, and of course I'll tape it once we tie off and you guys can follow us in there um, We haven't really explored the area too much But there's more over this way and down this way here So I'll get back to you guys and just stay tuned All right, we're now in the bunker There's really not too much to this place But it is definitely cool. It's got a lot of cool graffiti. Love the eyeballs that's a sign of spiritual wisdom for those of you who are not aware of Freemasons. Here is one way to get in. There's a door at the bottom there, but it's chain linked and padlocked. And uh, a lot of cool symbols. That right there is a Freemason symbol. This is like a closet room. And I'm sorry, let's see if I can get my light to go wider. No. No. Yeah, hold on. Mine goes wider. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so now we got a lot of light for you guys. So, um, this is pretty much the bunker, right? The floor's got these grooves in it where they used to, this is like an armory thing. I don't know, maybe the machinery set in there or I don't know what, what that's for. I, I would almost want to camp in here. I mean, it's dry. You know what I mean? It is cooler, but at least you, I think you'd be warmer down here. Isn't it, don't you feel warmer down here? I feel like it, it stays cooler and it stays about this temperature all the time. Yeah. You get this bat in your boat in your video? What bat? Yeah, there are bats down here, people. So just in case. I don't have my glasses on. So. Oh. Mr. Bat. He comes from the flying at me. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they're all over the ceiling. They seem pretty dormant. They almost look dead. I don't know why. They're acting like that. So some of the ceiling's coming off. Interesting. It looks like particle board. It's yeah. weird. I don't think they had particle board back then, did they? Whoever's ever room this was had couple air shafts. I don't even know how many guys would be in it left as electric. Weird. That's not that very is, old. I know, right? It is kind of weird. Like electric. Socket for a bulb. Yeah. As you can see. There's one really close to you. <laughs> Holy crap. I feel like he wasn't there earlier. Mr. Bat, they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Oh, those poor guys. I know a lot of you guys are probably cringing, but oops, sorry. But bats are actually not bad creatures. Most of them won't attack you unless you attack them. So 
As you'll see in some of my upcoming videos, when we go spelunking in caves, you'll see a lot of bats. You'll hear all the squeals and squeeches. And, and when you're alone in those caves, you'll think it's a monster. It's not necessarily a monster. It's, it's just bats. Looks like a fire's been here. Electrical fire. Interesting. This is the biggest room here. Maybe, yeah. This must have been like where they met or had like chow or looks like this was stoves were or something. Interesting. There's a lot of cool graffiti down here. So I don't know what these are for. And there's like some connections down here for like water or something. As you can see, people leave their trash in here, which is really disrespectful. I hate it when people come to these places and destroy them because this is like history. And when you guys come here, be careful of these things on the ground because I just tripped over it earlier. Oh, it goes in down the room. It's probably like a sewer pipe. Oh, it looks like I see daylight through it. Hmm. That's just your light, homie. No, I don't have my light on. Your head's oh, oh. <laughs> I forgot I had that on my hat. So climbing in was easy. Climbing out is probably going to be a little harder. Maybe. I don't know. This here is a very interesting symbol. So, this is... So let's go through the symbol one by one. So this is the male sign. This is the female sign. So that's generally with related to Freemasonry. This is considered Mother Earth. I don't know what M-O-R-X, so that's generally like medicine, R-X, with upside down cross, which is satanic. So I don't know what that stands for. So any of you in the comments want to tell me what that is or what that means. It looks like someone splattered it with red. I would be interested to find out. And the ceiling's coming up up here too. What was it? You can't grow a conscience free Charlie now. A conscious. Spelled it wrong though. No. Good penmanship though. Look at that people. I know. This is what you should be learning in school. Don't even teach cursive no more. I know, it's sad. Can you read cursive? Yeah. <laughs> There's also little pegs out of the floor. Huh? Yeah, so that's a good point. So there you are. That's either some goth teenager who has a lot of self-pity, or that's somebody who's trying to make a statement. I don't know. Again, let me know in the comments. That'd be awesome to know. It's all over. It's all over. That symbol's all over this place. You see this one? This one's pretty cool. Yeah, I got that one. That's some really good graffiti in here. 2015. It's like a person crawling out of a tent car. I don't know what that like means. A, yeah, it was like a tent they put over their car. With the shopping cart with trash bags in it. <laughs> it's like a homeless person. Muriel. 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 There's another one here. Someone got a little creative. Trash can, flower, and can. All right, so we're gonna go a little bit further on the trail and see some more interesting stuff. I should have did some of the video over there at that campsite. No, we're going back now, right? Are we? Yeah. Or are we going around? No, the loop is back past that camp. If we oh, that's on. right, that's right, okay. All right. Continue on the